Hi, I'm Eli Bricky, and right now you're watching BG on TV. Striking. 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 And welcome to the happy tummy. I am BG. Striking. I am BG. Striking. I am BG. Striking. Strive for perfection, accept reality. It's hard to believe that this season is nearly over, but all good things must come to an end. And so tonight, we bring you the last episode of this season of BG on TV. Later on tonight, we're going to be speaking with one of the members of BG on TV who helped produce the content for you viewers at home. We'll see what her plans are after the season wraps up and how being in this organization has helped prepare her for that journey. Before we do that, however, we're going to get an inside look at the Anime Club right here on campus and then check out the local Bikes for Tykes program. My name is Caroline Coates. I'm the current president of Anime in Northwest Ohio and Animarathon, which is the convention that Anime in Northwest Ohio runs. Animarathon for this year, it's our 10 year anniversary. So we're actually, that actually makes us one of the longest running conventions in Ohio. Um, this year is really important to us because of the fact that it's 10 years. It's 10 years of an anime club being run solely by a student organization that is pretty much, we get some money from the university, but everything is done by students with very little help um, in the actual organizing of anything on, by the university. We actually rent out the building, or the student union, a year in advance. So we even when the Ann Marathon this year hasn't started yet, we were already planning for next year. I think one of the reasons it's so popular is because it's so diverse in and of itself. There isn't just like one type of thing in anime. No matter who you are, you can find something in anime that you can love and appreciate, whether you're a sci-fi person or if you love romance stories. I mean, I think it's the quality of anime, for one thing. Uh, I think it's, it's just such a different genre of animation than what we're used to in the States. And I think it's the stories that kind of capture the imagination of, of the fans. Way back in the early 90s, it was sort of seen as Japanimation, and you had to wait, you know, years to get like VHS copies of, you know, whatever was most popular in Japan at the time. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's much less insular. It's gotten to the point where, you know, something is aired in Japan, and a second later you can have it over here. And um, there's a bigger community, and there's more widespread uh, fandom. It's just. Um, and I think people like anime or are drawn to anime because it's different. It's not something that you see uh, in American animation. And so people that are fans of animation or fantasy uh, get to see just these new takes on it and these exciting, uh, very kinetic ways of looking at it. I'm grateful to be here um, in Bowling Green. You know, that's one thing that's great about anime is that I get to do these conventions and go to different parts of the country and meet the fans because that's the only way really that as voice actors we get to know uh, how the fans appreciate what we do and also appreciate anime. I love putting something on that and then seeing other people enjoy it. Like, I, I do this because of how happy it makes others, and that makes me happy. I mean, there are lots of anime fans everywhere, but it's not something that you can sort of, it's not like something where you can wear a jersey if you're a sports fan of, you know, uh, you, you don't broadcast your fandom so much. So this is a place so people can come and they can kind of find out who's interested in the same sort of things they are and they can wear their fandom with pride and just, you know, uh, discover people from uh, all across the U.S. who are really into this sort of stuff. I love Anne Marathon because it's so open and it's so friendly and it gives people who maybe by normal society standards are a little odd or a little weird and it makes them feel normal. It gives them the chance to express themselves openly and know that they're not going to be judged. I got an email a couple of days after Anna Marathon from a mother of like a 12 year old girl and she was just like, and this email was so wonderful, she was just like, thank you so much for giving my, my daughter a place where she can make friends. Like, my daughter's usually very closed off and doesn't make friends easily, but within five minutes of being at Anna Marathon, she was opening up and talking to people. And for me, that is its own special reward. 
Bike for Tights is a special way to get involved in the dance marathon um, for myself, and I saw Bike for Tights as a more casual, laid-back way to get involved. Um, it's a way to really show your support. So I guess just, you know, having a good time, meeting new people, developing even more like connections and friendships like along this campus. And this year we've had a lot more involvement with uh, some of the Miracle Children. They come around a lot more compared to last year and that really puts in perspective of how much they're really gratified and thankful for all the work we do. Like I'm taking a weekend out of my life, you know, to like bike across Ohio and like it means so much to them, but even more so, it's for them, I feel like it's not about the money. Like they get to come here and they get to spend a whole weekend with college students who are all focused on them, who are all working towards like a common goal to like raise money for them. And so to me, that's just like so rewarding and I feel really blessed and lucky that I can help make them smile or, you know, able to provide more for them like in hospitals. The goal for this year is 75,000 and we have approximately 135 bikers. This year's goal was 75,000. We only took four more bikers this year than we did last year. And our total this year was, how about a drum roll? Come on! 81,000, $307.70. I just feel like it, um helped you realize, I mean, Dance Marathon does too, but like doing Bikes for Tikes over the course of four days uh, really helped you realize that there's like a lot to life and like you should appreciate being able to bike and being able to stand for that long and being able to do all kinds of things because um, some of the kids that we're raising money for can't do those types of things. I never ever thought I would do anything like bike 180 miles. Biking 180 miles for kids you never even met or seen takes a lot out of a person. It, it really shows character and it really gives the kids a normal life that they probably wouldn't have without the Children's Miracle Network. The greatest college experience that I've had thus far. Of my time at BGSU, this is the number one defining moment of my college experience. Um, I'm going to cherish every single moment of it and I wouldn't trade it for a world. All right, we're back here in the studio, and tonight we're joined by one of our very own here at BG on TV. With us is Brittany Moran. Now, Brittany, I understand you have some plans this summer to go to New York, and would you mind telling us a little bit about that? Uh, yes, my plan is to go to New York City mm -hmm. with my uh, very good friend, Debbie Alderman. Oh. We met through BG on TV, oh. and we're gonna take on the world. That's awesome. Well, what are some of the plans that you guys have once you get to New York? Uh, Debbie is interning with MTV. Ooh, that's then, really cool. <laughs> yeah, she's very excited. I'm excited for her. She's mm -hmm. got a really great opportunity yeah. to go there and do that. Um, what about you? <laughs> I am enrolled for classes starting in September with New York Film Academy. Mm -hmm. And over the summer, I plan on working with um, a small, a social media group oh, okay. called DiaryDiscussions.com. Oh, that's great. Well, how is how do you think BG on TV has helped prepare you for that next step? Uh, for me, it's been like I do the social media, so mm -hmm. that is kind of really my foot in the door. Like I've you know shown them that I can do social media. I've mm -hmm. been doing it for two years for a student-run organization like BG, well, BG on TV. Yeah. So that and then Debbie is. Const, like she has an amazing drive and mm -hmm. unfortunately she couldn't be here today because she's winning an yeah. award. <laughs> <laughs> well that's great that you two are yes. like a really good support system going into the big city and everything. Um, well last question, what, what's one of your favorite memories here or that you could like um, yes. share? My favorite memory is um, just being with everyone. Mm -hmm. We spend so much time together and putting the shows together. We've we've all gotten really close and we're a great mm -hmm. friendship and like BG on TV, they've become like my best friends. Well so. 
Thank you so much, Brittany, for coming in and talking with us. And on behalf of the BG on TV staff, we'd just like to say good luck and have a great time in New York. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, up next, we're going to check out Roman Butel as he attempts to pry into the minds of college students right here on campus, followed by an in-depth interview of BGSU's president, Mary Ellen Maisie. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Roman Butel, and today we're going to find out what's in my box. It's questions. These are just questions in a box. I'm going to go ask people. Let's go. How many times have you made your mother cry? What's the most attractive part of a guy or girl for you? How many times have you made your mother cry? Like three. Tell me about it. This is so awkward. Um, probably because I talk back to her. I don't know. I don't Physically or? or? Okay. I told her I hated her one time. That was really bad. I did. I apologize, though. I apologize. Um, it has to be their face. On a scale of one to ten, how attractive am I? I is me. I'll give you like seven. Nine point four. What's your favorite prehistoric era? Well, if Steven Spielberg has taught me anything, it's the Jurassic era. You seem like a Paleozoic type. Really? You think I'm microscopic and I don't use oxygen? Yes, I do. I helped that guy move in on move-in day, actually. What is the most awkward moment you've ever had with your father? Do you like my haircut? How's your relationship with your grandmother? <sighs> I'd say it was years ago. Um, he was estranged from me. And uh, I ran into him and we had a very awkward moment. Yeah. I both my grandmothers just passed away, so. At the bottom of the, the Death Star. And he told me, after he chopped off my hand, Luke, I am your father. Is that possible? It's smooth. <laughs> you, don't, you don't talk much. Hmm? Yeah, no. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Maisie, for just having the opportunity to take to speak with BG on TV. We know that uh, you're a very busy woman, and uh, it's just so great and, uh, to, to speak with you. So um, how have you been since the uh, inauguration? I've been great, mm -hmm. and I always have time for our students. Yeah. And uh, so I've um, enjoyed not only getting out and talking with students, meeting with students, taking students to lunch, but I spend a lot of time working with our alumni, too. Sounds great. Uh, how, is, how is it working with alumni, people who have passed through Bowling Green and you know, uh, what's been my joy of being president of Bowling Green State University is that I've probably met, I'm, I'd say now in the thousands of Bowling Green State University alumni, and they all talk so positively about their experience here and how much they love this great university. How do you plan to actually get involved directly with the student campus? Well, I, I try to do that already in a number of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, accept as many invitations I can to student events. Uh, I uh, take students to lunch. Mm -hmm. I've actually taught two classes fall semester. You know, not wow. not the entire courses, but okay. just a class, class. Okay. for someone else was guest speaker. So uh, anytime I uh, maybe I think that was three. In fact, anytime I get a chance, I try to uh, interact with the students and learn from them. So how do you feel about diversity, and how do you feel, and what do you think its importance is? I think it's of utmost importance mm -hmm. to Bowling Green State University and to all of us across this country. We live in a very diverse society. Mm -hmm. It's all about having respect for each other, learning from each other, and I will do everything I can to make sure that our faculty are uh, diversified on this campus, our staff, and our students. Absolutely. What are some of the plans from your particular office to retain students, to, to retain especially students of color, and just in general? I, uh, we've got a number of initiatives going on in terms of retention. If you look across the country, one of the major retention issues is good advising. Mm -hmm. So we Absolutely. need to make sure that all of our students have good advising. Uh, we need to make sure that our students uh, link with an organization, a faculty member, mentoring. Uh, mentoring is very important to all students, but particularly to a diverse student body, mm -hmm. it's important. And so uh, I support all those initiatives, the learning communities. We're known throughout the country for our work with the learning communities, the common 
first year reading. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just try to listen to students all the time about, in fact, uh, the one student I just talked to at noon, she was from New York. She said if she hadn't joined a sorority, she probably never stayed here. So that's wow. the organization. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I try to connect with them. I want everybody with whom I work to try to connect with our students and ensure that they have a successful career here. Absolutely, that sounds great to me. Cause um, as, as I mentioned before, it's very important uh, to have you know, particular offices and activities right. to retain students to come back to BG. So um, do you have any, like, any major plans for BGSU within the next few years from now? Like yes, any I major do. plans that will actually be noticed by the I students do. and faculty? Yes, I do. Uh, we're walking through the interior part of campus and I would like to renovate a number of these buildings. Mm, yeah. In fact, in total, uh, we just walked past the what they call the older traditions buildings, Mosley, mm -hmm. Hannah, University Hall, South Hall. We'd like to have those renovated for state-of-the-art classroom buildings. Okay, sounds great. Uh, we'd like to take down about five buildings on campus, the administration building, West Hall, Family and Consumer Sciences, <laughs> Eventually, we'd like to build a new business. We would like very soon to build a new business college, mm -hmm. get a lead gift for that, and then renovate that business building for the College of Education, take down the education building. Uh, we'd like to have new Greek housing, and that's in the planning stages right now. And uh, we need to really look at our science complex and how we can uh, improve the facilities there. So, good. so you've been vice president for voice, uh, and, and held numerous positions all over the country. Do you feel as if you are you have been prepared to be president of Bowling Green State University? I do because I've worked very closely mm -hmm. with about five or six mm -hmm. presidents at my other universities. I said when I was uh, appointed as president that I'd spend the first year listening, and that's what I've tried to spend most of my Absolutely. time doing. Absolutely. Fantastic. I want the students to know and mm -hmm. the faculty to know that I'm there to listen to them. I may not always be able to, they make a request, grant mm -hmm. the request, mm -hmm. but what's most important is to listen and understand their needs, understand what they think will build BGSU's future. So I want to build on the successes of my uh, predecessors, but I think it's very important to always be out there with students, faculty, and staff, and alumni. Sounds and so good. it's, you know, you've got all those groups and it's important to be mm -hmm. uh, listening to them. And one last question for you before we wrap up this interview. What gets Dr. Mary Ellen Mazie out of bed in the morning? Oh, it's, uh, the, you know, I, I think the one uh, thing that people have always said about me is that I have energy and enthusiasm for what I, for what I do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is important to me. It's, uh, it's important that I can... One of these days, when and if ever I do leave BGSU, I leave it in a better place than what it was when I entered. And so every day, it's what we can do to improve BGSU together. So um, I, I just have, you know, I'm an early morning riser. I get up about 5 or 6 a.m., so it's easy to get up. And then I come in and I start that day. And, you know, I usually go to about 9 o'clock at night and I go to sleep very quickly. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I completely understand. Absolutely. Well, this has been a great yeah, experience it. walking and just talking with yeah. you and just that personal feel. And yeah. just if you'd like to check out more of Men on the Street, go online and look at the extended version. Now, we're just about done with our last episode of the season, but don't go anywhere yet. Up next, we've got the conclusion to Kevin Morrissey's Ugly People. Previously on The Ugly People. But, you know, we do live together and it is kind of expected. Wow, this is awkward. Uh, didn't expect it to be this bad, but um, Anna, I'm sick and tired of being the way that I've been and holding this in. Um, so I decided to make a change, and I woke up this morning and I thought, why not let today be the day that I that I make that change? Anna, do you have feelings for me? I mean, I do, but what are you trying to say, Henry? I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I, just, uh, you make me feel different but ever since the day that I met you. Henry, it's... Very 
This is awkward. Henry, I've... I've never seen us going in that direction, and we have such great thing going. I don't know why we would want to complicate all that. You didn't tell me your boyfriend. <laughs> oh, this is my roommate Henry from <laughs> high school. Must not remember that, so are we doing out? Oh, but I'm Sean, by the way, I'm sorry. Hey. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go. Henry, I can't live with you next year. What do you mean? It's too awkward after last week. But we signed a lease. That's why I found a subleaser. Jenna is going to take your spot. Hey! You don't even have the courtesy to tell me in person? It's too awkward! Okay, so you sent it through a text? Open up! Bad time, bro. What was your deal? What do you mean? Come on, man. I've known you since freshman year. You've been acting weird all night. What's on your mind? I don't know. Spit it out. Okay, so I told Anna everything, and she kicks me out. She's got this new boyfriend now, so she doesn't even really care about me. I oh. have no idea what's even going on. I might have a solution. My roommate just got deployed. He's over in Afghanistan. We're gonna have to run out his room. That'd be perfect, man. You move into my house, it'd be one year-long party. I don't know. Come on, man. You've been hung up on this girl forever. It's time to move on. Just move in with us. Hey, guys! Oh, man, how are you? Hey! It's been a while. Henry, this is my friend Sydney. This is Scarlett. I went to high school with these broads. Hey, uh, Henry. Uh, Henry. Nice to meet you. So, uh, do you live here? Uh, yeah, I uh, just moved in a couple days ago. I'm up in the, uh, the attic. But it's comfortable up there. Yeah, I'd say it's more cozy than anything, but it's a place, so. Do girls like fireworks? Yeah, we were gonna set some off later tonight. <laughs> Are you coming? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. good. So, uh, you went to high school with Tommy? Yeah, he's a pretty fun guy. Yeah, he's great. How long have you known him? Oh, uh, since college. You, uh, you hungry? Sure. Want a burger? Yeah. Awesome. How do you like yours done? Well done. Awesome, my kind of girl. I can't believe classes are starting in a couple weeks. I know, right? Well, with the summer ending, looks like you're also going to have to put an end to your summer fling. What fling? The guy from the 4th of July. Henry... He's not like that. I think he just wants to be friends. All guys are like that. He's just being shy. No. Listen, he may be coming off as just being shy or just wanting to be friends, but if you want something, you're gonna have to take it. Sydney girls don't do that, guys do. This isn't Victorian England. Besides, even if it was, you'd have to behave more like Scarlett O'Hara if you're gonna find a nice guy like Ashley. I have no idea what you're talking about. You watch way too much TV. Henry? The 4th of July? Sydney. How's it going? I mean, good. How's your sleep? Too bad. Just for the the highest value. Rationality as the highest virtue. And his own happiness as the final purpose of his life. So. I can't believe he assigned a project the first week of class. I know. Totally ridiculous. So do you want to work on it together? Yeah, sure. Two people probably get it done quicker anyway. When do you want to work on it? I mean, we can go over to my place right now if you want. Okay. Who are you texting? Oh, it's, uh, it's just a girl I like. Is it your girlfriend? No, I, I don't think she feels the same way. Well, I can help you forget about her. Come on. No. Come on. I don't, I don't dance. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. No, I'm telling you, Tommy, I don't just want to hook up with a girl and then throw her out. I mean, is it weird that I want some sort of connection? 
Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, you're gonna find a girl out there and forget all about Anna. There's tons of girls out there. Trust me, I've been with half of them. That's disgusting. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't want to have to worry about half the campus. I want to worry about just one girl. Once you get one, you, you're not gonna want to stop there. There's all types of shapes and sizes you're gonna want to try. You're gonna want to have more, and there's the more comfortable you get around girls, the easier it's gonna be for you to just say, hey, my name's Henry. I'm not like that. We all are. You'll see. All right, guys, that wraps up season four of BG on TV. I know, I know, parting is such sweet sorrow, but fear not. BG on TV will be back in full force next season in the fall. If that's too long a wait, you can get your fix of BG on TV by logging on to wbgu.org slash BG on TV and catch up on your favorite episodes. Oh, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. It's been a great season, and we'd just like to thank all the producers and staff here at WBGU TV for making it all possible. We'll see you back here for season five. Thanks for watching.